at the premium gateway to Mangaluru, one of the premier cities of Karnataka possessing all types of domestic and international connectivity, is a full-fledged commercial complex, the premier corner Nandur, now available to make your dream venture a reality. Each floor is spread across 4,200 square feet to provide a class ambience to your clientele. Added into all safety norms, the Premier Corner is all set to be a game changer for any business, thanks to its easy connectivity. Located right beside NH66, Premier Corner has been built in view of futuristic needs with ample space for vehicle parking in two basements. The G plus 3 storey building is the right place to start premier ventures like corporate office, vehicle showroom, IT firms, exclusive retail shops, brand outlets and to add on a terrace cafe. Come invest and own this premier space at Premier Corner. Contact plus 9181-971-43675 or plus 9176762181 for a premier business deal. Good morning viewers and welcome to the Amazing People Series 2 Episode 4. Today, we have a topic, social and civic activism, whether it is required or not required. Now, we have a guest who is prominent in his work of social and civic activity, none other than Nigel Albuquerque from Mangalore, Karnataka, a proud Kannadiga who wants to see that uh, social and civic activism is required for the upkeep, uplift, and development of each ward in a corporation. And this is what he is working on. Now, let me introduce uh, Nigel Albuquer to all of you. He is graduated from St. Aloysius College, Mangaluru. Nigel served in Mangaluru and Mumbai and returned to Mangaluru to action something of lasting impact for the benefit of his hometown in particular and to society in general. He actioned on local self-governance in Mangaluru, Mangalore City Corporation, MCC. About five years back, he and Ajay De Silva formed a like-minded citizens initiative called Mangalore Civic Group. He is working towards institutionalizing citizen participation via ward committees and area sabhas. Welcome to the program, Nigel. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. My first question to you, tell us more about your roots, childhood, parents, and family. I was born and brought up in Mangalore. And uh, as a child, I had uh, a very uh, quiet upbringing, just like any other Mangalorean would. I studied at St. Aloysius and uh, 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 it was more of a protected environment where, you know, the typical Mangalorean way of growing up. Uh, yeah, about my family, uh, I'm the second of four of us. I have an elder brother, a younger brother and a sister, both of whom are twins. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, we reside in Bijay in Manglo. My mother, after I lost my father when I was young, uh, she constructed our own place and uh, we have been residing here ever since. Okay, good. So you are rooted in Mangalore and want to do something for Mangalore through the ward committees in area sabhas and you are fighting for it. Uh, exactly. Good, you have that Mangalorean spirit of fighting. Uh, we have a stalwart from Bijay uh, you you remember who is who is who fought always and reached uh, uh, to the Lok Sabha and became the defense minister. George Fernandez. Yes, he is from Bijay and he's a warrior similar like you. 
but he, he is, is of a, a great stature but uh, definitely he has got the spirit of that fighting and it is generated from st louis college and from mangalore yeah he he is indeed an inspiration uh, because if one bijay boy could do so much then yes. other bijay boys can certainly try to emulate him as definitely yes and we are all proud of late uh, george fernandez and he has made uh, mangalore and uh, st louis college very very proud now let's go to second question from service to social and civic activism why and the motivation for this yeah uh, a very good question uh, yes i was uh, in service particularly in uh, mumbai and um, but you know uh, throughout what used to always uh, um make me wonder or uh, get me perturbed was that uh, you know i always wanted to do something of lasting impact something that would impact on a large scale uh, just uh, performing uh, a service uh, of course it would take care of myself but then what about the society i belong to what about the roots where i come from so this always used to uh, kind of bother me that i should be doing something more than the usual um and that is when i decided that i should be doing something of lasting impact as i said um and i narrowed down to this particular cause which is institutionalizing citizen participation in local governance that's the manglo city corporation and i took it up as a challenge to convert an impossibility of nearly three decades into a possibility and yes now it is happening slowly but surely okay great uh but uh, let me ask you some related question yes do you get uh, information on the work that has been carried out uh in war in the world by the corporators uh, do you get information from right to information act yes right of uh, right to information act is open to all indian citizens yeah. so people can always uh, access this uh, option uh but it uh, more importantly or i should say fundamentally it should come from each individual that is it is to start from within people have to realize that they are not islands everyone lives in a society and there are other um, fellow beings uh, in and around your uh, where you reside where you work so everyone is faced with the same predicament wherein you know they get a raw deal by, from the administration so how do you get this rectified so we wanted to set up a platform a proper institutional mechanism where the common man of manglo the ordinary manglorian would be able to voice out and get his rightful due from the local administration and uh, this is uh, as i said it has to start from each individual people have to of course it may not be practical for everyone to take up each and every matter city wide uh, but at least look around your neighborhood in and around where you reside and your workplace see how you can contribute to making things better improving the conditions the quality of life so all along uh, we never had this uh, mechanism in place and now as i said it is on so people should come forward and participate in the right spirit and you can certainly convert an impossibility into a possibility why mangalore civic group when there are elected corporators again a very good question when you have an elected corporator 
<clears throat> who the majority residents of the ward vote for every five years, why do you want citizens to come forward and participate? Shouldn't the corporator be addressing the, uh, the wants of the people? <clears throat> Unfortunately, this has not happened. Possibly in the earlier days when Manglo was still a small hamlet uh, and, uh, you know, it was more of a small town uh, approach, uh, it, it may have been working to an extent, wherein one man or one woman elected by the people uh, could have been uh, looking into their problems. But as the city started growing, and expanding, the population strength increasing, and uh, even the skyline of the city started changing. <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, it was almost impractical for one person to address each and every requirement of, his, of the people who elected him. Therefore, it only required feedback from the people. It is a uh, almost impossible for one corporator to look into each and every person's, uh, each and every ward resident's requirements. So people are, it only uh, uh, led to people having to come forward and put forth what they wanted and drew the attention of the corporator. <clears throat> this one way administration was no longer going to be effective. So uh, it had to be two way. You, you can't just expect a corporator from the corporator's uh, perspective, you can't expect one uh, him or her to <clears throat> just assume what people want and keep doing things. There are people have to specify what is needed, what, what they want, and then it is taken forward, for which we needed a proper institutional system. And that is ward committees, and which are already implemented. It's five months now, five meetings are up. And um, shortly, the second layer, which is called area Sabha, will also be implemented, uh, wherein it will be the governance as desired by the people of Mangalore. Very good. Uh, not, uh, not one single corporator anymore. Very good, Nigel. And uh, uh, already five months on, uh, these ward committees, I'm sure they are in all the corporation, uh, all the wards of the corporation, right? Yes, all the 60 wards. All the 60 wards. And uh, I'm sure there will be changes to see. You have really, uh, you know, hit uh, a point where uh, it reminds uh, to all of us that uh, after voting, uh, we should not keep quiet and leave it to the corporator and uh, the elected representative that uh, he or she will do and I will sleep. No, those days are gone. This is what you are saying. We have to participate in the work progress of our ward and our corporation so that uh, uh, civil participation is necessary to highlight what is required and what is wrong and what is to be rightfully done, correct? Exactly, exactly. that is precisely right. what is required because uh, one man, one woman elected by the people, you ask him for something, you bring something to his notice, at least nine out of 10 times, he would not listen to you. So it defeated the very purpose of electing him or her as your corporate. So how do you make the corporator pay heed or listen to the ordinary resident in the ward who has a concern? So this is precisely, mm -hmm. it's called the 74th Constitutional Amendment, um, uh, which, was, uh, which took effect in June 1993. So you can imagine from June 1993 and finally getting implemented in March 2022, nearly uh, 29, 29 years. 29 years. Later. Yes. Right. And right. the sole reason why it happened is because I led this challenge. Um, what I found is 
people were not even if people were interested they were they were not uh, they were at a loss to uh, know how to go about getting it done so i decided that it it is now or never if it's not going to be done now you can be assured that another three decades it's not going to happen so i took it up as a challenge you can call it more of a more as a mission and led the way and people extended their support all like minded citizens of manglo came forward when applications were invited this they applied many of them got selected and now they are sitting on their respective ward committees and um, for the people for the general public uh, as i said area suburbs will come up shortly so the mechanism is going to work this way and that is every ward is divided into two areas the meetings of the area sabhas the two area sabhas in each ward will be held once in 3 months the area sabha is presided over by an area sabha representative nominated by the commissioner uh, for administrative assistance there is a nodal officer and these meetings will be conducted as i said every quarter uh, the minutes of the two area sabhas are then forwarded to the ward committee so it is like the lower house and the upper house the <clears throat> the minutes once forwarded to the the minutes of the two area sabhas once forwarded to the ward committee uh, become the agenda for the ward committee as well the ward committee deliberates on what the common people the common residents of the ward want they deliberate on uh, on the, on the on the on the points and uh, the in turn the minutes of the ward committee are forwarded to the council secretary for ratification during mcc council meetings that's at the corporation level and subsequent implementation so in other words or rather in short it is the governance of the people of manglo the people will decide and the corporator or the corporation will only implement what the people want so this is called citizen participation the true spirit of participatory democracy so really really you have uh, worked for this and uh, i'm sure more people will come together and participate in the participative governance of the yeah. corporation so that uh, they should know or they will bring out what is required for them what is not required for them what things need to be done what things need not to be done and exactly. this will definitely improve the quality of life in mangalore for the residents wow yeah. wonderful nigel hats off to you and let's take a break now and uh, we'll come back after a break are you planning to settle in the capital of west coast of karnataka if so here is a ready to build property adjacent to mangalore city amidst lush green which indeed is the right place to have a happy home just 20 minute at a distance of 10 kilometers from the heart of the city located at neer marga is one of the most prominent developing area of mangaluru city limits a peace and serene place surely be loved by your dear ones surrounded by natural trees and valleys the 13th century plot of solid terrain is the destination for construction of your everlasting dream home various educational institutions hospitals malls historical and religious places at close vicinity will be additional booster for your comfortable and holistic lifestyle The ready to sell plot located near Manipal University's proposed campus will assure you good ROI if you are thinking in terms of investment. Contact plus nine one eight one nine seven one four three six seven five or eight two one seven seven two nine eight five nine. Now, uh, my next question to you is: uh, Do you think this is necessary? and are you getting citizen participation willingly it is a new concept and when a, not just ward committees or area sabhas any matter for that uh, anything else uh, for that matter uh, you introduce something new 
it takes time to to gather momentum but for a start we are doing fairly well um when applications were invited this is after our, we moved the high court uh, firstly i'd like to just uh, give you a a brief uh, background into what the situation was and what it has become now yes uh, go ahead go ahead yeah the, the corporators regardless of which party they belong to simply stonewall the implementation of the 74th constitutional amendment i mean the reason is obvious nobody likes you asking questions so the easiest thing to do is stonewall block it don't implement it although it was the constitutional mandate uh, so we realize that uh, it's not going to work by merely going and asking the commissioner to get it implemented the commissioner of course his primary duty is implementing the law so it's not going to happen is what we felt and uh, commissioner also said to us you go to the high court bring the order and then i'll get it implemented so rightly we went ahead and did it and um, applications were invited and um, a, a total of 1271 applicants which is a very good response and uh, given that it's being done for the first time uh, about 500 were selected out of these applicants and um, the the meetings as i said commenced in march this year once in a month every ward committee meets in the third week and uh, the members put forth their requirements the corporator is the chairperson there is a secretary nominate uh, uh, who is designated by the commissioner to provide administrative assistance and uh, it's been working uh, that way so far uh, but now for effectiveness uh, to two important tasks are pending as on date first as i said area sabas need to be implemented which is also part of the high court verdict and uh, alongside to make the meetings effective you need to have bylaws draft uh, notified so i have uh, we have taken the lead and uh, approached the commissioner once again even the deputy commissioner of dakshin kannada and uh, the local mla as well and everyone has assured us that uh, the ward committees that were i mean what they said is we have to appreciate the fact that where there were no ward committees today there are ward committees now to make the ward committees effective we need bylaws it will be done and the area sabhas giving voice to the people of mangalore to speak during the meetings will also happen uh, immediately after okay good uh, just for the knowledge of our viewers and the ward people how many people are there in ward committees and how many people are going to be in areas but as for the kmc act that's the karnataka municipal corporations act uh, a ward a full fledged ward committee has to have 10 members uh, there are five categories as well to be met three women three general that makes six two resident associations one and the the other two are for reserved categories that is sc and st so you need to have a full we uh, all the 60 wards are uh, required to have full fledged committees uh, but this being the first time applications were invited in response to the high court order uh, uh it being a new concept altogether most people were unaware of the intricacies involved uh in 49 out of the 60 wards uh you find uh, uh people uh, applying mainly for the three women and three general categories and no uh, practically no applications coming in for resident associations sc st etc so as a result of which out of 60 wards when the selection panel headed by the commissioner performed the selection they uh, the selection uh, was for full fledged committees in 11 wards only and the remaining 49 wards 
are, I mean, um, they had less members simply because of paucity of applications for those uh, reserved categories. Uh, the, uh, right through, we have been in persistent pursuit and follow up with the commissioner. And uh, uh, he uh, has, uh, I mean, when, when he issued uh, the notification for the commencement of the meetings in March, he also uh, uh, instructed the secretaries uh, to to provide uh, admins. Uh, I mean, to collect applications uh, wherever there are there's a deficit, and uh, the process is on uh, to fill up the vacancies in these uh, forty nine ward committees. Okay. My next question is to you. What are you doing to educate common people about ward committees in area sabas? and also to participate as members of the ward committees and area sabhas. Of course, the commission, uh, the, the commissioner did um, uh, introduce uh, training programs before the ward committees started functioning in March. But then this is a very vast subject. A two hour training program is not going to suffice. It will just give you an overview. So people have to as I said earlier, people have to uh, express interest. It has to come, interest has to come from the people. Uh, the easiest way I would suggest for people to learn is to read the provisions of the act and the rules. It is a mere 10 pages and it's in layman's language. Anyone reading the, uh, those 10 pages will understand what it is. And thereafter, uh, you, uh, the stakeholders would need to be assessed and uh, subject to achieving a given score, they would uh, become fit to, um, to participate at the meetings. But what has happened as of now is uh, most people are ignorant about the provisions of the act and the rules. So effectiveness has taken, I mean, is yet to be put in place. Which again, uh, once as, as I said, once bylaws are notified, should happen. But there is no escape to the people learning the new system. Everything, every new system has a set of rules to be followed. It's only when you meet those rules that you will meet, you will also meet with desired results. Um, my feeling is that uh, people are, so far they haven't really expressed the kind of interest I expected them to express. But yes, over a period of time, it will slowly uh, fall in place uh, as it runs its course. Okay. Uh, my questions to you after referring to you, do you have any plans to organize uh, uh, meetings in uh, area sabhas by this uh, committees? Uh, so that you can uh, make people aware their uh, rights through these committees and areas of us? I have expressed to the commissioner that uh, we need to uh, conduct an effective training program, uh, not merely a classroom kind of training wherein uh, it is... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, j j just the speaker says something and... Uh, uh, people don't really get the whole uh, picture. Uh, it needs to be made effective. So we wanted to conduct a training uh, for which uh, commissioner said to us that uh, we'll wait for three meetings to be completed. That is March, April, May. We'll look into it in June. And uh, when uh, June came, uh, you know, some of the corporators see it's obviously you're going to face some resentment from the corporators who had a free run all these years. So at the MCC council meeting, some of the corporators expressed their reservations saying that they use this word in Canada, which is called, which is gondola. Uh, 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 ward committee sabe galali gondola aktaide. So what is this gondola? If you were to, own, what are these problems? If you were to only uh, uh, 
uh, uh, go into details, you will find that it is nothing but the procedure for functioning the meetings, which again reflects on bylaws notification. And uh, uh, in the bargain, the entire focus now has shifted for, to uh, the notifying of bylaws and the subsequent uh, functioning of area sabars, a total of 121 area sabars, 60 ward committees and 121 area sabars. As a result of which, uh, although the commissioner is wanting to conduct a second training program, um, it may have to wait for some time. Until then, um, uh, I, as I said earlier, I, and I'll reiterate again, the easiest way for anyone to learn this system is to read those 10 pages. If they have any questions, they can always get back to me. I will address them. Or um, they can, um, if, the, if we are able to organize a group of people, we can proactively conduct a training session. But um, yeah, I have to say this again, there is no escape to learning this new system of participatory governance. Uh, now, my next question to you, uh, hmm. you took a judicial route for the implementation of this uh, uh, ward committees and area sabhas. Yes. Where was the resistance coming from and why it was coming? You mean the reason for uh, going ahead with the judicial route? Yes. Yeah. Obviously, it is the elected corporators, the corporators that have, all Mangaloreans have been electing and many of them repeatedly. In fact, I belong to uh, 31, Ward 31 Bijay, where there is one single man who has been winning seven times on the trot. So when such is a situation, you know, people only, uh, people have got accustomed to listening to what the corporator says. People have to start uh, thinking for themselves, rationing things out, seeing through what the corporator says and acting uh, from uh, in a public interest perspective. That is, that is not yet happening. It will happen slowly as in how the momentum for ward committees and area suburbs fix up. But yes, Mangaloreans in general have been uh, electing and uh, following the corporator alone. As a result, the corporator has had a free run. Uh, participatory democracy was almost alien, you can say, completely alien. Uh, no questions to be asked. You, the corporator does what he wants. Now, when we, when such was the well-oiled system that was in place, wherein one man or one woman was having a free run, uh, we set up Manglo Civic Group, go to the authority who is the MCC commissioner, and we say, no, this will not do. We have to change the system. Nobody is going to uh, take a, uh, I mean, nobody is going to like it, right? You are trying to, you are trying to, uh, uh, what shall I say, um, uh, overturn the existing system. And uh, you're saying, no, that is wrong. Do this. This is right. Now, uh, when you try to do that, obviously, there will be, uh, corporators will get ruffled. Um, they feel that they are going to lose their power. And... Uh, 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 because you can imagine <clears throat> uh, um, one uh, uh, one MLA, I mean, former MLA rather, he said to me that many of the corporators were acting like ward mo a ward corporator, acting like a ward monarch. So well, this brings us to the question, are we living in a democratic country? Is this governance of the people, by the people and for the people? Uh, that one corporator acts as a monarch and does whatever he wants to do, he or she wants to do as per his or her whims and fancies. This is not the way uh, that the constitution was, uh, I mean, the constitution of India is designed. So when there was, uh, like I said, when there was this uh, well-oiled uh, system for decades in place, and then we go and say, no, stop that and do this this is what has to be done as per the as per the rule of uh, as per rule of law 
obviously there's going to be blocking. Nobody is going to pay heed. Nobody wants this simply because nobody wants any questions asked. Nobody likes a questioner. Someone asking questions is always frowned upon. So um, finally, uh, finally uh, the authority being the commissioner, I asked him straight, what do we do in this, uh, in this situation? He said, you go and bring the court order. And then we'll do it. Then we'll tell them there's a high court order and it has to be done. So that is what led us to the judicial route. And then uh, we, uh, uh, I negotiated with an advocate in Bangalore, a practicing advocate in the high court. And we crowdfunded through Mangalore Civic Group. Uh, uh, all like-minded persons uh, uh, contributed whatever they could. And uh, we went, filed the case. November 2018, we filed the case in the high court. Uh, August 8th, 2019, the judgment orders were pronounced for immediate steps to be taken to implement ward committees and area suburbs in Mangalore City Corporation. <clears throat> However, to implement ward committees and area suburbs, you first needed a council in place. At that time, the, uh, it was the period in between two councils. The previous council term had expired and the new election was not yet held. Uh, this was August 2019 and then November 19, the elections were held and uh, results were declared as per the people's verdict. And uh, But then again, the swearing in did not happen immediately. There was a delay. There was a tussle between two candidates in the ruling party who wanted to become mayor. So, you know, self-ambition, all... all all these um, self um, people wanting to become mayor, looking for positions, all these things are, it, it happened. And then um, about three and a half months passed with no council in place, even after the election. Finally, end of February, is it okay I go on with the chronology? Please, please. The yeah, go ahead, go ahead. We want to listen. Uh, finally, end of February 2020, the council was finally sworn in. And all the respective, uh, I mean, the mayor was elected, deputy mayor, and then the standing committee was nominated, uh, selected, and uh, all those things, uh, all the respective uh, panels were put in place. Uh, and we were elated that at least, uh, that finally the council has come into being, and now a high court verdict will, uh, be, will be given effect. Uh, but again, unfortunately, came the corona pandemic. And in uh, the first lockdown, which caused a delay. And despite all of this, I was persistently following up with the commission. Finally, commissioner said to me, we have listed this matter in the first general meeting agenda. Uh, the meeting is on the 16th of July, 20. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, everything was set. Mat agenda prepared, all set for the meeting. Uh, uh, and it so happens that uh, the deputy commissioner of the district imposes a one-week lockdown. And then the whole thing gets postponed. Finally, rescheduled to 13th of August, 20. And uh, that uh, at that meeting, uh, the council unanimously approved. Uh, they pass, uh, the council passed resolution unanimously for implementing ward committees and area sabhas. And the process followed is what is implemented at the previous meeting is uh, ratified at the next meeting. So then September 20, August 20, uh, unanimous resolution passed. September 20, ratified. And then we just, I, I, uh, I said to the commissioner, the next logical step would be inviting applications. And he did that. End of October 20, applications were invited. The entire month of November was the window provided to submit applications, 4th December was the last date. And then um, the, the numbers were declared that a total of 1,271 applications were received, which surprised me as well, because uh, given that this was, uh, this was being implemented for the first time, I didn't really expect numbers to exceed 1,000 uh, as such, because in other cities it is not, uh, such as Hubli, Darwar, and even uh, Bangalore. So anyways, it was a, a, a welcome update. And uh, the commissioner then set up a selection panel. See, the corporator has no say in the formation. 
the corporator only chairs the meetings once the ward committee start functioning so he has no role as per the law he has no role in the formation uh the commissioner is the authority so commissioner headed selection panel and his three deputies that's the uh, the three uh, commissioners who are uh, who report to him the you can call them deputy commissioners <clears throat> they were the selection panel commissioner was uh, the final authority and uh, as i said he chaired the selection panel they were they conducted the uh, selection process in the meantime came the second lockdown april 2020 and with all these delays finally they 21 uh, april 21 april sorry april 21 yeah uh, finally with all these delays uh, beginning of uh, may uh, sorry i'm uh, it's beginning of july actually uh, lockdown was till june uh, beginning of july the mayor made a statement that the provisional selection will be published by the month end end of uh, that is end of july 2nd of august they published the provisional selection gave 15 days time for the public to submit their objections if anyone had any, any objection on any one selection and uh, thereafter the same selection panel were, was in charge and they reviewed the 100 plus objections a total of 498 uh, members were selected out of uh, a total of 1271 applications um 102 vacant uh, 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 positions were vacant due to paucity of applications and uh, uh, the objections as i said were invited uh, more than 100 objections were received for 498 uh, members selected and then the uh, uh, selection panel went through i mean evaluated the objections received the proceedings were published along with the final selection which was uh, dated uh, i mean published dated uh, 2nd of november 21 uh then there was a small delay of about a month because the mlc election code of conduct came into effect and beginning of january this year 22 uh they conducted a training program but it was more like a classroom training and uh, an ngo from bangalore was uh, appointed to conduct this program at the town hall 30 wards mem- members of 30 wards were called in the morning for a 2 hour session the other 30 wards 31 to 60 in the afternoon the secretaries and the corporators were trained in the council hall and all of this just an overview you can call it um i i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't uh, think that they got into any uh, details um and this training was done in january then the secre- uh, the commissioner finally uh, issued an order saying that the monthly meetings have to commence uh, in the third week of every month so okay. it meant from the month of february because this was uh, dated beginning of february um the secretaries then came up to the uh, and uh, said they wanted a uh, an in-depth training a second training program and because of this the uh, second training was given to them in february and the first meetings finally happened in the third week of march so uh, okay. uh, uh, march april may june july and now we have just completed five meetings and as okay. i said the next step as a logical step rather and commissioner also is aware about it is notifying the bylaws and functioning area okay yeah. okay good This nigel you have running, explained uh, yeah you have explained what you have gone through from 2019 till yes. now since you uh, went to the judicial route and yes. how tough it was to implement the things uh, good to know viewers see there are there are people like nigel who are inclined to do something good for the people through such kind of service uh, really we need to uh, support them support nigel and his team so that uh, you know the changes of uh, uh, such kind happens through the legal system and good can be done for the mangalore city corporation 
for the people of Mangalore City Corporation. Because uh, as he said, there are a number of uh, people that are getting elected uh, you know, every five years, not only in his uh, constituency or uh, ward, but uh, I, I mean, uh, whole of Karnataka, this happens. Uh, and uh, the, no, no ward is not, uh, you know, uh, similar. Uh, this is happening uh, every five years. Uh, so naturally, uh, people have to learn what they want and see from their eyes what is required so that uh, this particular legal system works in their favor by themselves. Right, Nigel? Yes, uh, people right. should uh, uh, right. people should learn to take leadership. Right, right. Uh, and uh, once they make a study of the provisions and the law, uh, yeah. put it into practice for the benefit of the general public. In other words, right. public interest. Right. Now, it is possible, provided you are, you possess conviction on your part, you mm -hmm. take the lead, go ahead and make up your mind no matter what you will take it take the matter to its logical end okay let's take a break now nigel and we'll come back after the day attention here are two properties located just adjacent to nh73 at melkar bc road which is the place most appropriate to realize the dream of having the home for a happy living just 30 kilometer drive from mangaluru the West Coast capital of Karnataka, two layouts of 20 cents and 19 cents respectively, with village ambience, are ready to build with clear documents. The hill opposite to these properties are reserved for the proposed university campus of a prestigious Mangalore-based institution, giving you indeed the right investment opportunities in future. Payas religious centers around will give you a spiritual feel amid modern lifestyle, on-time healthcare facilities and educational opportunities are available within reach. Contact 9181971-43675 or 8217729859. Okay, we are back uh, and now is the question, is this model working anywhere in Karnataka and how successful it is? And who is driving it? As I said, this, it is the 74th Constitutional Amendment, which took effect in June 1993. Uh, what committees had been set up intermittently in the city of Bangalore, in the capital city of Karnataka, but not as designed by the 74th Constitutional Amendment. Uh, there was no proper procedure followed, lack of guidelines. And uh, in many of the ward committees, the corporator, the sitting corporator, even though he had no role in selecting the members and in the formation, which is vested entire completely with the commissioner, they performed, uh, I mean, they selected the members who would sit on the committee, they filled up the committees with their friends and relatives, and the entire purpose was defeated. And the, uh, the, uh, finally, uh, even after doing that, the many of the ward committees were not even meeting once in a month. So all such uh, flaws were commit, uh, I mean, uh, took place in uh, BBMP Bangalore. Uh, now, when uh, ward committees uh, were to be implemented in Mangalore due to us taking up this cause, I was particular to make sure that the mistakes committed in BBMP Bangalore were not repeated here, even though the act is the same. So all the flaws, I brought it to the notice of the commissioner. I said, we, we, we want these mistakes not to be repeated in MCC, that's Mangalore City Corporation. If not, it defeats the very purpose of setting up ward committees and area suburbs. So I would say Mangalore City Corporation has outperformed uh, BBMP in Bangalore. And uh, 
uh, the commissioner here, Mr. Akshay Sridhar, an IAS officer, he has um, he has set a benchmark, you can say, you, or you can call it a model for the other cities of Karnataka to follow. There are a total of 11 cities, urban local bodies in Karnataka state. Uh, Bangalore, BBMP Bangalore was the first to implement ward committees. Second was our Manglo City Corporation, MCC. Uh, and when it comes to area suburbs, Manglo will be the first to implement. The other cities, other urban local bodies uh, are equally qualified to implement ward committees and area suburbs. In fact, uh, citizens group in Mysore uh, moved the high court uh, for implementation of ward committees and area suburbs in Mysore City Corporation. So it is very much possible. Um, Hubli Darwar has uh, invited applications based on the government's directive for, and they've received application uh, from the citizens for ward committee selection. Uh, Kalaburgi, which is uh, formerly Gul Gulbarga, they have also followed suit. Applications are invited. Dav um, Davangere has done the same. So the, the other cities in Karnataka state are slowly but surely following the, Good. the Good. lead taken by uh yeah. by us in fact yeah. bbmp it was a flawed uh ward committees uh <laughs> that they they set up flawed ward committees we are the first to set up uh you can say possibly the most i won't call it a hundred percent uh perfect model but uh you can say at least uh two-thirds have been uh uh, are a model to be uh, emulated by others. So we are way ahead of any other city, not just in Karnataka, but anywhere possibly in the country, in the entire India, where ward committees have been uh, implemented in, in a, uh, uh, through a process that has uh, re resulted in a, a model to be followed by others. There are flaws. You can't expect uh, yeah, uh, understand. Perfection, perfection the first time, but yeah. yes, two, two thirds we have achieved uh, and yeah. very well. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, happy to know that uh, if uh, people are emulating the Mangalore model and then uh, uh, it works out to be a wonderful thing for the whole of Karnataka and even to India, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, the Mangalore civic group will be remembered. Uh, for their, uh, uh, you know, this uh, social activism forever. Uh, yeah. Now, Mangalore Civic Group uh, started five years back. And uh, what's the support you have from Civic Society of Mangalore? Is media in Mangalore highlighting your cause? The local people, whoever is like-minded, has openly welcomed our initiative, uh, the mission that we have taken up, and they are, they are, they are with us. Uh, but yes, this uh, this concept has yet to reach a large section of Mangaloreans. There are people who have not heard about ward committees and area sabas till date. So they have to be uh, brought into the mainstream and um, or possibly uh, um, uh, I think this will happen. Uh, in due course of time, uh, as uh, ward committees perform, and even the area suburbs, there will be a notice a noticed development taking place in the respective wards. That in turn will push people. I mean, should push people to find out how another ward is outperforming them, how they are progressing better than. The, their ward, like how is the neighboring ward doing better than my ward? So that kind of competition could could uh, come in, and uh, then the people will automatically be led to this new system, and then they learn the new system, and that's how it spreads. And uh, over a period of time, uh, it could take some time. Uh, all Mangaloreans uh, should be encompassed by with this concept, and people will realize that 
following one elected representative is futile and instead you follow this new system of monthly ward committee meetings um area sabha meetings once in 3 months and then you will get your rightful due from the ad, uh, uh, city administration um what was the second part you said the i said is media in mangalore highlighting your cause media. uh media yes uh, some of the media are uh, have openly supported us without naming them we don't want yeah. to name them but uh, yeah. generally are they supporting you yeah. are they highlighting your yeah. cause some of the media some of the media have openly uh, supported us they publish uh, our reports and uh, Yes, the, there is no one who has uh, said no to us among the media. Right. So right. because um, uh, it is a uh, it is something in public. It uh, ward committees and area sabha. When you talk about it itself, everyone understands mm -hmm. that it is something in the interest of the people. So right. it has to only spread far right. and wide with time, okay. and. Uh, those who haven't heard about this have to start learning about it and over a period of time as i said everyone will come and uh, will be brought under this umbrella and okay. um, yeah the media the press and media have been supportive to our cause thank you very much nigel and uh, my last question to you what are your thoughts on this program and what's your message to news karnataka viewers this is a very good program amazing people you identify select people who are doing amazing work completely selfless work where the only objective is we want our hometown like in uh, in my case for example uh, that you have selected me for the uh, to come on your program um uh, our, our objective manglo civic groups objective is we want our people our hometown to do well and we have to empower the people now people may be interested in doing something but they don't know how to go about it. so those who are talented or possess the skill to to show them to lead the way should come forward take the lead find out what the legal framework provides and work in sync with the law to get things implemented which is very much possible it only requires commitment and you need to you can also say conviction and once you take up the matter once you take up a cause you have to take it to its logical end there's no point in starting something and leaving it half done right, right so the end result is most important and throughout you have to be in sync with the provisions of the law so nobody can turn around and find uh, point fingers and say that what you did is incorrect when you are in a, when you when your uh, platform is secure obviously others will have to fall in line with time isn't it right right and uh, well, the mission the message i have for everyone is whatever you do do to the best of your ability and uh, unfortunately <laughs> i have to say this this is my observation over a period of time that our people should start thinking collectively uh we are highly qualified we hold high positions uh, and uh, we earn a lot of money and we do well for ourselves and our families but what is missing is that we we fail to look at the collective perspective that we belong to a society we need everyone to progress along with us uh, and uh, if that has to happen the the first first and foremost is the the self factor should be replaced or you, you need to cut down on the self factor and start looking at the world around us Yes. Start, uh, in other words an inclusive uh view where yeah. you want everyone to perform to the best of their abilities yeah. and uh, everyone doing well obviously means mangalore does well 
this is what i would urge all mangalorians to follow yeah thank you thank you nigel uh, uh, nigel is calling for all uh, people of mangalore uh, or mangaluru to join this particular uh, you know activism that he has started which will benefit uh, the entire people of mangaluru uh, and uh, what he says is we need to think beyond me and we collectively think as we uh, then only the progress starts uh, with this wonderful thoughts uh, i thank you all the viewers for watching this and also uh, nigel albukar uh, for coming and explaining about uh, how uh, important the ward committees and area sabhas are required for the progress of the work in each ward according to the desire of the people what should be done what should not be done the participation of every person we have 7 lakh plus uh, population in the mangalore uh, city and how each one can participate and contribute to the development or to the progress of mangalore city strengthening the elected uh, representatives what uh, nigel means is by this we can strengthen the elected representative and we can ask them to the account of five years what he does in the uh, world or he or she does in the world uh, thank you nigel for coming to the show and explaining and uh, thank you viewers uh, don't forget to uh subscribe to our, our youtube channel news karnataka so that uh, we bring several programs like this we get in touch with amazing people like nigel or mithali or father salin or many more to come uh, who are working selflessly for the benefit of their fellow citizen thank you nigel and uh, thank you so much and i hope uh, more uh, amazing people are the result of such programs yeah thank you